Hey y'all, welcome back to our channel. I'm Victoria and this is Super Geeked, where we celebrate all the things we get super geeked about. Many of you are my reselling friends. You may already know that I like to do these videos once a month. They are what sold videos. I do my what sold videos showing you all the items that sold for $40 and above. And the reason why I like to do that is because that is the price point that I'm looking to sell my items at. So these are brands and items that are bringing me $40 and above. And if I'm looking at a what sold video, those are the types of items that I am looking for in your videos. So I try to share that information with you. So if that sounds interesting, stick around. This month is going to be a little bit different. This was February 2021, and it was not a great month for me. I'm going to be honest with you. There was a lot of stuff going on in my life. My We had a death in the family and had to travel to Ohio. We also went on our first vacation since quarantine. We went to Disney World, so we were gone for at least a week of the month of February. And as you know, February is only 28 days. So there was a lot of stuff. And then I had some personal things going on that affected my ability to do my job as effectively as I would have liked to do. You know, sometimes life just happens. And I am also a homemaker at this point in my life. And I'm taking care of my children and my household and my husband. And it was just a lot. February was a lot for me. And so I did, I don't have as many $40 and above sales to share with you this month because I didn't make as many sales because I wasn't working as much, but I did have some great sales and I definitely want to show you those items. But I thought since I don't have as many $40 and above items to share with you, to share with you five brands or items that I would not pick up again and let you know the reason why. So, All right, so if you're new to my channel, I sell on four different platforms. I sell the majority of items on Poshmark, then I also sell on eBay, Etsy, and Mercari. I like each of the platforms for different reasons. I have been selling on and off on eBay since the late 90s. I have been selling on and off on Etsy since Etsy launched in the early 2000s. Poshmark has been a little less than two years of selling on that platform. And Mercari, I have been selling for somewhere between six and eight months. But like I said, each platform has their own benefits and drawbacks. Right now, currently, I make the most sales on Poshmark. I am going to start with the other platforms first since I have fewer sales on those. First, we'll do eBay. And this is a very exciting sale. I think this may have been the highest price sale I had for the month of February. This was a mug, a Toby mug by Royal Dalton that I picked up at the Goodwill outlet. So I probably paid about $2 for this item, but it was a rare 1992 jug of the year. So it was only made in that year and only available during the year 1992. And there are other Winston Churchill Toby mugs, but this one I really liked. I liked the artwork. I liked the figure. I liked the, the added items like the flag and the bulldog and his cigar. I don't know. It was just really cute. But as soon as I saw it in the bin, I knew what it was. All these people had passed it up. It sold for $187.80 on eBay. And after cost of goods the fees and the shipping, I made $146.75 on that mug. So that was a great sale for February. And then also over $40 on eBay, I sold this Ann Cole one piece bathing suit. I don't pick up tons of bathing suits, but I did pick this one up from the thrift store because it was new. It still had the liner in it. It still had, it didn't have the original tags, but it did have the bag with the extra strap in it. So it was new and it actually sold for $73.50. And, and then after, after cost of goods, fees and shipping, I made $55.09 on this one piece swimsuit. 
of course, we're moving into swimsuit season. So now is a good time to list your swimsuits because a lot of people, as coronavirus is starting to wither away, at least we hope, people are going to start thinking about possibly vacationing this year. So get those swimsuits listed. Next up, we're going to move over to Mercari. I only made three sales on Mercari in February, but all three sales were over $40. That is one of the benefits to Mercari that I have seen is that the majority of the items that I sell on Mercari sell for full asking price. I don't get tons of offers on there. So that's why I like Mercari and I'm so glad it's in the, in the rotation or else I would not have had these three full price sales. So if you're not on Mercari, it's something you might want to consider. I do use Vindu to cross post. So it's not as hard for me to list on other platforms. It's not as time consuming. And I'm definitely going to keep Mercari in the rotation because even though I don't sell tons on the website, I do sell full priced items. The first one is an Ariata Silent Journey dress. Now, I didn't know anything about this brand, but at the beginning of quarantine, my neighbors started donating tons of stuff. And one of my neighbors donated this dress and one of you told me that it's a great brand. So I decided to keep it instead of donating it. It actually sold for $50. Of course, my cost of goods was zero. And then after fees, and I do free shipping on Mercari. So after you dedu deduct that, I made $39.74 on this dress. Then I sold this and other stories jeans. Now I didn't have as much profit on this, even though it sold for over $40, $40 because my cost of goods was $7 on these jeans and shipping was higher because again, I do free shipping on Mercari and their jeans. So they weigh a little bit more, but they sold for $47. And then after cost of goods, fees and shipping, I made $25 and 80 cents on these jeans. I would still pick them up. I might prefer them to sell on a different platform because of the fees and shipping, but happy with the sale. Next up was this mod cloth button front tunic top. It had birds all over it. I actually thrifted this item. I really love mod cloth. And if you've been around for a while, you know this, you know, I sell a lot of mod cloth. This item sold for $40 and after cost of goods, fees and shipping, I made $28.46. Next up, I'm going to share with you two Etsy sales that were over $40. I have gotten back into selling mid-century and mid-century modern hard goods, especially on Etsy because there's a big market for them on Etsy. These are two items that I actually had listed from when I used to resell a long time ago. So they have been on my Etsy store for a while, but the first is a Danish modern mid-century teak serving set. It had a glass sugar bowl and creamer. And then the bottom was in this sort of like asymmetrical, almost a boomerang shape with teak wood. So the serving set sold for $48 and 44 cents. And it, the cost of goods was zero because I bought this for myself a long time ago and just was reselling it. Um, after fees and shipping, I made $35.37 on this item. The next item also had a cost of goods of zero. This was two little shelves that I bought for my kitchen and had painted them red. They are mid-century 1950s shelving. Very popular. So if you see these out, definitely pick them up. If you find them for under $15, I would recommend all sizes, shapes, whatever people are looking for these. And I sold them for $50.70. They were very small shelves. And then after fees and shipping, I made $35.89 on these. So next up, we're going to talk about Poshmark sales, where I make the majority of my sales currently. Shipping is paid for by the buyer on Poshmark, so I will only have to deduct cost of goods and fees unless I offered a shipping discount, which you are required to do if you send out an offer to someone who likes the item. First up are these vintage Hugo Biscotti black leather pants. Really cool. I found these at a thrift store in Mobile, Alabama when we traveled to go sourcing. The buyer bought them for $50. And after cost of goods and fees, I made $35.24 on this item. Next up, I got in a DIY designer box from ThreadUp. 
a while ago. They are some Paul Green suede sneakers. Uh, the buyer paid $55 for these and after cost of goods and fees, I made $33 on these sneakers. Another designer item were these Prada cork wedges. They were really cool because they had natural cork but they had sort of like a whitewashing to them. And I bought these on shopgoodwill.com. I was experimenting, trying to source from there and was not very successful, but I paid $21 and 71 cents for these with shipping and they sold for 99. So after cost of goods and the fee is from Poshmark, I made $58 and three cents on these Prada sandals. Next over $40 item was a recent purchase. They were, they were these Veronica beard pants. You may have seen the video where I did something crazy. These pants were in my friend's Instagram stories and I went straight over there after I dropped my kids off to school, which is an hour away and bought up a bunch of stuff that she left behind. These pants were one of those items. They were Veronica Beard white flared denim pants. They sold for $40 and after cost of goods and fees, I made $25.11. Next item was another purchase from that thrifting trip and it was the Citizens of Humanity Georgia high rise boot cut jeans. They were super high rise. The boot cut had a slit in the flare of the bottom of the pants. They were a brand new style from Citizens of Humanity. They sold for $80 and after cost and good and after cost of goods and fees, I made $57 and 11 cents on these jeans. Definitely would pick up new Citizens of Humanity style jeans. This was the second highest sale of the month of February. This was actually a donated item from my mom's friend. This was a Ralph Lauren 100% camel hair blazer. It was brand new with tags. It was in a light camel color, made in Italy, very cool. Very grateful that she donated this item and I was able to sell it for $150. Since there was no cost of goods on this item, after fees, I made $120 on this blazer. Next over $40 item that sold in February was another mod cloth. You guys know I love to sell mod cloth. This was by the brand Chi Chi London. And I have a lot of formal dresses, but they do sit for a while. Totally fine with that because I know that I'm going to get a good return on my money. This was a navy high-low cocktail dress and it sold for $60, which was a which sounds like not a lot for this dress, but I didn't mind taking the $60 because I only paid $6.98 for this dress and it was new with tags. So after fees, I made $41.02. And guys, that was the last item that sold for over $40 in February. I told you, wasn't a big high selling month. Now I have to say, I didn't do a lot of sourcing in February. So my personal net income was not affected by the fact that I didn't work a lot in February. That's something I wanted to note is I didn't see a difference because I wasn't outsourcing as much as I did in January. So the lower sales are okay. I had a lot of mid-range sales around the $30, $35 mark. And so it was still a good month for me. But I wanted to share with you, since this is a shorter video than I normally have, and I don't have as many items to share with you, over $40 are five sales. Well, one of them has two items, but five things that I would not pick up again. First up was this Nike Pro dry fit running pants. I actually got this in the 100 pound thread up bulk box that you guys saw me unbox with my friend Alicia at Murray Life. I kept these to try to resell them. I don't sell a ton of athletic wear unless it's like Lululemon. I've sold a couple free people movement, but I don't sell a lot of Nike and these were, you know, an interesting print, but I wouldn't pick these up for resell. I am going to do an update video on my 100 pound bulk box from ThreadUp. I was one of the people that got the first round of the 100 pound boxes. And I told you guys I would be back in several months to give you an update on whether I would purchase that box again. It was a lot of work and you will see that video coming out very soon. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, that button down below is still red. Click on it and make it turn gray and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that next video that comes out about the bulk box. 
see if it's an option for you. But this item came in the bulk box and was not one of my best sellers. It sold for $15 and after cost of goods and fees, I only made $7.38 for that for that item. Really not worth it to me if I was picking it up for resale from a thrift store. Okay, y'all hear me talk about mod cloth a lot, but let's talk about some mod cloth that I would not pick up again. This is actually two different items, but we're going to count it as one. The first is this Mod Cloth BB Dakota dress. I got this from the liquidation company here in Mississippi. I got it when they were at the bare minimum of what they had of the Mod Cloth. It was highly discounted in price. And so I was basically picking up not my first choices, I would say. But a BB Dakota is not a very expensive brand. And even though Mod Cloth has done and carried some BB Dakota, I don't see that moving very fast. It's not their kitschier stuff. Um, so with Mod Cloth, the kitschier, more novelty print style is what does better. It's what they're known for. And this was just like a basic floral dress that you could find in any brand. So I got two of these, one in a size four and one in a size six. The size six sold. It did sell for $30, but after cost of goods and fees, I only made $17. Now that might sound good to some of you, but it sat for a long time, like over a year. So if I was sourcing mod cloth, I wouldn't pick that up again. And to piggyback on that, here's another mod cloth dress that I would not pick up again for the same reason. It's just a basic floral dress. It did have some eyelet detailing, which I thought was cute but it sat for over a year and it sold for $35. And then after cost of goods and fees, I only made $21 on it. So, I mean, if I found it at a thrift store, I might consider it, but I really am looking for certain brands under mod cloth and certain patterns and these basic ones that look like every other floral dress in the store. I'm just not going to pick them up anymore. Okay. Number three that I wouldn't pick up again and I stopped picking up was I bought these Sasha London leather shoes from the bins. They were these cute wedges. Sasha London makes some super cute shoes and they're really quality shoes. I think they're expensive to purchase retail, but resell, people just are not looking for them. So I have purchased three different pairs of Sasha London shoes from the bins and I just finally sold my first pair that I ever picked up and the others are still sitting. So I have started passing when I see these even at the bins. These did sell for $30 and my cost of goods was only about $2. But after fees and all was said and done, I made $22. And again, I had to wait a long time to find the right buyer. And there's really no interest in the other two pairs. And they're just as cute as these. So not a brand I'm picking up. Another brand that I'm not picking up anymore is Zara. So I used to pick up some of their, you know, more kitschy novelty stuff that they put out, trendier stuff. But at this point, I'm got I'm getting away from fast fashion as much as I can. It's just not what's in my business model. Some Zara has sold, you know, relatively quickly for me, and some of it just sits forever. And these jeans sat forever. They were cool because they were a soft denim, but they were lined in fleece. So they were definitely for a colder climate. I'm not really sure why somebody had them at the thrift store here because it doesn't get cold here in South Mississippi. We are on the Gulf Coast and we have maybe one cold, cold day a year, but they did end up selling for $16 after cost of goods and fees and waiting forever to find a buyer. I made $9.93. So totally not worth my time because if you consider washing or steaming, photographing, I do include measurements, inventorying, and then shipping, it just wasn't worth my time. So I have started passing on almost all Zara. Another brand that I am passing on a lot, I will pick up some special pieces in this brand, but it is Topshop. So I picked up these Dusty Rose Wide Leg Palazzo Pants. I really thought they were going to do well because they were huge, but they sat forever. I bought this in Pensacola when my husband and I went on a trip there last year in February. 
So that tells you how long they took to sell. And they only sold for $25. So after cost of goods and fees, I only made $15.85 on those pants. So definitely not something that I would pick up again. Again, I do pick up Topshop from time to time, but it has to be something extra special that I think will sell really well because the rest of my Topshop stuff, even new with tags, is just sitting. So that is five items that I would pass on sourcing. If you're a new reseller, it's important to take these videos on YouTube with a grain of salt. What works for me doesn't always work for everybody else. But with my business model, the clientele that purchases for me and the other items that I keep in my stores and closets on all the platforms, there are just certain items and brands that don't work for my business. And so this is just my experience. You may have a total different experience. And there may be people out there that can sell the shit out of some of these brands. Also, remember that my business model and the way that I like to source doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Some people like to sell bread and butter brands and that's all their businesses. And that is totally cool. Like, I think that's amazing. You have to find your own way and it takes time experimenting and figuring out what you want to do, what you want to sell, what works for your brand. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.